Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. So I hope you are finding these video lectures helpful. I've done quite a few of these and this is The Painter's Secret Geometry Part 9. Today's going to be a little bit easier than some of the other ones that I've looked at. The painting that you see on my screen, it's by Goya. And I'm not going to go crazy with this because below doesn't go nuts with it either. However, I am going to add a few elements that Boulot doesn't touch upon. The first thing I want to mention about this painting is that you have a square being played out and that square is right here. I'm going to draw this. The top of this balcony right here, I believe that's considered a balcony. It's designed on the square and that's right there. So I just figured I'd point that out before I start dropping the 14 line grid. So let me get into that. Like I said, this one's not going to be terribly confusing today. When I drop this diagonal line though, notice how it's following the angle of the profile of that girl, that figure. And I'll drop my horizontal there. It's interesting, I, a while back, I remember talking to an artist. She had picked up the painter's secret geometry. And her response was, what the F? She had no idea what was going on. And I understand that because it's a very difficult book to interpret if you don't understand the 14 line armature. In fact, you won't be able to interpret what's going on if you don't at least have the basics on the 14 line grid. And, Juliet Aristides talks about that in her book, Classical Painting Atelier. She gives it a very simple breakdown. She does not confuse her readers at all. Her, her books are really for the artist of all kind and even the layman that doesn't know anything about art will get a kick out of her books. They are just that easy to absorb and they're really interesting. She's an amazing writer and she has a way of putting things in a way that really makes sense. And that's why I always recommend her books above anybody else's information, including the Barnstone. I think she's a little bit better of a teacher than Barnstone is, but that's just personal preference. When I drop this diagonal line, notice how it's picking up the angle in this figure's back, but also the angle in the face here. And this diagonal line is following the angle in this figure right here. And then when I start dropping these other lines, You'll see more elements lock into place. And I will eliminate some of these at the end because they're not all necessary. When I drop this diagonal line here though, notice how it's picking up the angle in this figure as well. And then I'll just drop the bottom half. By now, the artist that wants to learn this, they should have this grid memorized. They should be able to do this in their sleep. I never even think about this anymore because it's so repetitive, which makes it an amazing way to learn. The easiest way to learn something is through repetition. And because you're always using the same 14 lines, no matter what size your canvas is, it's much easier to learn. So, all right, so that's the basic grid, the 14 line armature. I'm going to drop a few more lines. I think I'm going to get rid of this one for now though. If I drop a vertical right here, it's going to give me the edge of this seat right there. And I'll just bring that, I'll bring that to right here. But when I do that, when I drive this vertical through here, bring it right there, runs along the edge of that. Where this vertical here and this diagonal line meet here, right in this section here where my cursor is, I can now drop that horizontal line, which was part of the square. And it gives me that division right there. So I just thought I would throw that in. I can also drop a horizontal line right here where these two diagonal lines meet and it gives me the horizontal in that seat. So I have the horizontal and vertical and this is giving me this element right there. 
I'm not going to break this down any further, but let me clean up a few lines here. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to eliminate any. I can also drop a horizontal line right here where these diagonal lines meet, and it gives me this horizontal of this figure's arm. And I'll just bring that to right there. I was going to eliminate some of these lines, but it's not too bad. It's pretty straightforward. Notice here, too, how this diagonal line is being played out with this arm as well. And you can find more divisions in this. I'm choosing not to go any further. And I did break it down a little bit further than Charles Below did in his book. But I, I just wanted to take it a little bit further today. It's still readable, though, and I think it's good. But that's going to be it for today. I hope this is helpful, as always, and thanks for joining me.